This is our vintage Star Wars collection, and I can take you on a tour and show you what we've got. Perhaps the most classic um, is the X-Wing. We have a few here. One of them is Lego, um, and the others are not um, different sizes. But this was the uh, main fighter used by the Rebels um, in Star Wars 4, 5, 6. Uh, saw a lot of use against the Empire and did a good job. Here we have a few more Rebel ships. These are Y-Wings and they are bombers rather than fighters. Um, so they store their sort of torpedo bomb things back here and launch them at their targets. Now we have some Imperial ships. These are ground vehicles, the AT-ATs, um, and they're classically known for their invasion of Hawk and their weakness, which is their kind of frail legs, which um, the rebels tie up with the snow speeder and they collapse into the ground. The TIE Fighter here is probably the most well-known Imperial ship. Um, got the big wings uh, and a very recognizable sound when it's flying. Here's a Lego one. Um, I really like the Lego models, they're just great. Um, and some smaller ones that aren't Lego. Uh, they are kind of a rival to the X-Wing um, in terms of what they can do. These are B-Wings, uh, more rebel ships that they use in their fleet. Uh, they land like this, but once they take off, um, their wings can extend and actually the ship can easily rotate while it's flying while keeping the cockpit in place. So they're pretty agile. These are the snow speeders that the rebels used on Hoth to um, defend themselves against the Imperial invasion with the AT-AT walkers. They have the cable that they can launch and that's what they use to tie up the legs to defeat the invasion of walkers. This is Darth Vader's personal TIE fighter. Uh, you can see it's a little different. It's got the, the wings that curl in and this back section um, is flatter. Um, and this is what he flies around when he needs to attend to his business. The Imperial TIE bomber looks pretty similar to Vader, uh, his TIE fighter, because it's got these curved wings that are long like that. Uh, but it's different because it's got these two cylinders running back. This is a bomber. It would be similar uh, in class to the Y-Wing of the Rebel fleet, uh, but this is like a Thai version of it. Here is the Rebel Blockade Runner. Um, again, one of the most classic of the Rebel ships. This is the one that Princess Leia is on at the beginning of A New Hope. Um, and Darth Vader enters and tears up the place trying to get the Death Star plans. Here are the Imperial Star Destroyer, probably the most feared of all the ships because it's the largest and it's probably got a bunch of TIE fighters inside of it. Um, you see that um, in episode four, the blockade runner I just spoke of um, gets pulled up inside and this little model of the um, Star Destroyer actually has a blockade runner down there and if I pull up on the engine, and it pops out like that. Um, so it gives you a little bit of sense of scale. These models look like they're about the same size, but the Star Destroyer is actually so, so much larger. We also have a few action figures here. These are not from the original trilogy. They are from the Phantom Menace. We've got Maul, Obi-Wan, and Qui-Gon. Um, the Maul, the Darth Maul action figure is probably our most valuable piece. Um, it could be upwards of a hundred bucks. Um, in this condition. This is just another part of the Rebel fleet. It's the A-Wing. Um, it's a little smaller, more lightweight than the X-Wing that they use. Here we've got a few Imperial shuttles. Uh, the shuttles are well known for uh, their landing mechanism. Where they fly like this and then pull up their landing legs and their wings. The Emperor sometimes flies around in these, maybe other Imperial officers. Uh, but they're less used as combat vehicles, uh, just as shuttles to take people around. The Slave One is Jango Fett's ship, um, also Boba Fett's ship, and it has a unique shape, very recognizable. Um, it kind of flies in this direction so that its cross-sectional area is pretty large. Um, but it also has um, wings here, um, and on this model, we actually have the ramp that comes out. If you push down on the guns here, you can pull down the ramp, and it actually contains Han Solo in carbonite. And if I open up 
Um, we've got the actual Han Solo inside. Here's the TIE Interceptor. It's another Imperial ship, uh, another model of the TIE Fighter, but it's a little bit faster, uh, kind of a, an upgraded model of it. Here are the lightsabers that you've been hearing humming in the background. Uh, we've got Anakin's lightsaber from the original trilogy, or the prequel trilogy, and then Darth Vader's lightsaber from the original trilogy. Um, you can see a lot of similarities. You've got these black strips on the hilt. The button is in a similar place. Um, the emitter looks a little bit different, but uh, I think that this one probably inspired him when he was designing his other lightsaber as Darth Vader. Here are some things we 3D printed. Uh, this is a helmet of the Mandalorian from Star Wars latest series. Um, and then we've got two clone helmets. This is a phase one clone helmet, which you see in episode two, Attack of Clones. And this one is uh, phase two, which you see in Revenge of the Sith, um, sort of a newer model. And you can tell it looks a little bit more like a stormtrooper. This is not printed. This is um, a droid similar to the one that you see in The Mandalorian, um, who meets The Mandalorian. So I hope you enjoyed seeing the collection. Most of these are vintage. Um, like I said, a few of them are newer or 3D printed. Picked up a few as a thrift store. I actually got this blue lightsaber in Disney World a few years ago. Um, but it, bring, it really brings back a lot of memories for me. Um, and I hope you enjoyed seeing it as much as I enjoyed going through it.